Hi, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to Lazy Road Talk. Happy Saturday. Happy weekend. I did a survey recently, and based on the survey, the P information or news about the PLA got the lowest ranking. Um, but my uh, live stream last week, no, actually this week, I forgot, maybe last weekend, uh, some of you did ask me about the PLA. So I decided to... Um, to talk about that because there is some very interesting development within the PLA that I think the public is interested in. Um, actually, today is one of the one of those rare occasions where Lay is actually wearing the same shirt that uh, that's used in the thumbnail. <laughs> Oftentimes, the, my thumbnail, uh, the shirt that I wear that I wear in the thumbnail has nothing to do with with the um is not the same as the one that I wear during the live stream but today uh, it's actually the same so <laughs> all right let's get started so Chinese leader Xi Jinping has certainly been pushing his military to prepare for war however growing irregularities have been observed in the PLA leadership and Xi's relations with his top military leaders are in disarray. And it started with the rocket forces house, major house cleaning last year, and followed by the downfall of uh, a number of top PLA leaders, including the defense minister. But things have evolved from there, and they don't look very good for the Chinese leader. Uh, today, we'll cover five five subtopics we will we'll discuss his troubled relations with his PLA with his military leadership from five um in five areas the first we'll talk about Xi Jinping's conflict with his two vice chairmen primarily one but the other one is somehow related um um, so first we'll talk about the conflicts between Xi and his vice chairman of the Central Military Commission um, the second one, th then we'll talk about the competition between the two vice chairmen. And, and then we'll talk about she may be suspicious of one of his most trusted officers, the man in charge of PLA's HR and the head of the political work department. And then we'll talk about the newly promoted defense minister uh, who's in a very awkward position because of the men who... Uh, promoted him or recommended his promotion to Xi Jinping. Last but not least, we'll talk about the covert struggles between the PLA media and Xi Jinping. All right, let's get started. Uh, first, the conflicts between Xi Jinping and his vice chairman. I use plural here, but uh, let's first talk about his uh, relation with this man. You probably all know him. Uh, Zhang Youxia. So since last year, Xi Jinping has been investigating and dealt with a group of senior generals, right, including the past and present um, commander of the rocket force, the past and present defense minister. And many of these fallen generals were the former subordinates of CMC vice chairman Zhang Youxia. And this certainly has strained the relationship between the two. Um, two things have surrounded Xi's um, conflict with Zhang. The first is what we just what I just said, the number of former subor subordinates that are uh, that have been removed from power. And the second is that Zhang is uh, Zhang Youxia is the only princeling who's holding high positions in Xi Jinping's leadership team. Uh, here's a I love this picture. It just shows you how the guy feels right right now. So he's the son of a founding general of the Chinese PLA. So Zhang Yuxia and his father enjoy the status of being the second pair of father and son generals in the history of the PLA. So he is a princeling. Um, and he's also the PLA leader with the most seniority and is the only one with actual comeback experience. I mean, him and then the, um, the um, and the, Liu Zhengli, the other member of the CMC. Uh, but, but Liu is much younger. Liu is in his 50s and, and Zhang is in his 70s. So he is the most uh, senior PLA leader who actually had has war experience. 
um, his influence in the military is actually greater than Xi's. It was clear from an event that Xi Jinping attended earlier this year during the Lunar New Year period. Xi Jinping attended a, a musical performance for the retired military leaders. And when Xi Jinping uh, walked into the audience, followed by Zhang Yuxia and other members of the CMC, uh, it was very interesting. The Some of the retired PLA officers did not salute Xi, but they saluted Zhang. And this just shows you how much, um, how much respect this guy has. Um, so Xi Jinping has lost the support of um, key princelings. And I've made videos to talk about his struggles with other members of, uh, of the princeling party. And many of these major princelings are formal PLA leaders. So as Xi Jinping's struggles with the princelings have intensified, you know, his, he certainly worries about, you know, Zhang's influence among the princelings. Um, so, you know, the other event that, that uh, signifies this ongoing struggle that she has with the princelings is the sentencing of General Liu Yazhou, uh, sentencing him to life, life in prison. So she is wary of Zhang Yuxia's influence in the PLA and also his possible affiliation to other members of the princeling parties uh, and, who, and, and those who oppose him. Um, so so, so these are the two issues he had with him. One is, you know, all these, you know, many of his former subordinates were caught in corruption or subversion or 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 espionage, espionage. And then two is uh, this man's influence in the PLA. Um, so that's the that's the reason why their relationship has been strained. However, she's losing trust in John has led to the conflicts between John and the other vice chairman of the CMC. So now we're going to talk about the conflicts between the two vice chairmen. Okay, so here they are. Um, so while Xi Jinping is struggling to find out how to deal with Zhang Yuxia, the other vice chairman, He Weidong, sees the opportunity. Unlike Zhang Yuxia, He came from, I mean, unlike Zhang Yuxia, who came from a military family with solid um, a, a solid track record of, you know, military leadership. He Weidong got promoted to the position of vice chairman only because he had known Xi Jinping well uh, when the two were in Fujian. So in 2019, He Weidong had already reached the retirement age uh, for the rank of major general, um, and many thought that he would he was going to retire. But surprisingly, he was promoted to the rank of general from major general and the commander of the Eastern Theater, the PLA unit responsible for operations in the Taiwan Strait. And in 2022, at the 20th Party Congress, he was not, he was not even a delegate to the, to the Congress. You know, that, that might have been, people didn't figure out why, but he was not he was not on the delegate list. He was not even an alternate member of the Central Committee. But surprisingly, he got promoted in three you know across three ranks, or he he moved up by three ranks in one go. He became a member of the Central Committee, a member of the Politburo, and finally, um, to the vice chairmanship of the CMC, making him uh, uh, ranking the third in the PLA after Xi Jinping and Zhang Yuxia. Um, so when the rocket force and the defense minister drama got into full play last year, and um, um, when you know when he saw Zhang Yuxia's relationship with Xi Jinping has strained. Uh, this guy certainly felt that his chance has come. So suddenly he, you know, went under the limelight. Uh, before the Lunar New Year on February the 8th, Xinhua published a report called Zhang Yuxia and He Weidong, 
the two vice chairmen, visit and inspect troops stationed in Beijing and extend their New Year greetings to officers and soldiers. Um, but when People's Daily reprinted the article, it changed the title to He Weidong and Zhang Youxia visit and inspect troops stationed in Beijing, blah, blah, blah. You see, People's Daily switched the order of the name of the two names by putting He in front of Zhang. Uh, well, Zhang's seniority is, de is definitely higher, so his name should appear before her. And this kind of precedence is, I mean, CCP cares about this kind of thing, you know, very much. So, but why People's Daily didn't follow Xinhua's report and, and deliberately change the order? This could not be a mistake, as CCP media has a whole department of staff in you know, reviewing this kind of issues. So this indicates there's some kind of um, a rift or internal struggles within the CMC between the two vice chairmen. In addition, during the recent two sessions in March, He Weidong um, appeared more actively than Zhang Youxia. Uh, instead of Zhang, he chaired the meetings for the military delegation um, despite being ranked below Zhang. So people have, you know, speculated that Zhang Yuxia would soon retire because he's 72 years old and that Xi Jinping would replace him with He Weidong. However, then something unexpected happened at the two session. On March 5th, He Weidong attended a discussion by military delegation and made remarks about combating the, the PLA's, quote, false combat capability. Okay, so the so-called false combat capability refers to the falsification of equipment, armaments, missiles, and training by the general equipment department, arms, missiles, and training departments of the PLA. You know, all of, all of those were supervised by Zhang Youxia. Uh, and his former subordinates. So He's remark hinted subtle attacks on Zhang Yuxia. It was, very, you know, it was like, uh, you know, accusing people that Zhang was responsible for, for, uh, for causing false combat capabilities. However, his remark caused a backfire as. The as a vice chairman of the CMC, because he actually admitted that the PLA's combat capabilities were false, and this was politically incorrect and a big no-no. Therefore, shortly after the comment was released, it was deleted and removed from the entire Chinese internet. So now um, on the website of Xinhua, CCTV, China Daily, or even the PLA's websites, if you search He Weidong and false combat capability, you get no, you get nothing. Nothing will come up. Um, Zhang Yuxia's people might have used this opportunity to launch counterattack against He, and they certainly scored a point because they had a they had a point. I mean, they had a valid point, right? And and this appears to have affected Xi Jinping's opinion on He. On March 20th, Xi Jinping met with PLA officers um, above um, uh, in 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 um, where where was that in Henan in, in in sorry in Hunan in Changsha when he was visiting Changsha. He met with PLA officers at or above the rank of colonel. Um, now, normally, He Weidong would be the one accompany him in recent times, but this time he did not show up. Zhang Youxia accompanied Xi Jinping, and He was nowhere in sight. So, and people noticed that change, right? So, um, and so since presiding over the second plenary session of military delegation during the two sessions on March 9th, he has not made public appearances. So people say that his comment 
you know, is has caused himself troubles. Um, he probably is being ordered to do self-reflection and self-criticism. Um, it was said that PLA officers um, admit or admit and lower level, admit or lower ranks uh, reacted negatively to his comment. After all, you know, this guy didn't earn his respect from um, from you know, other members in the PLA because he was promoted too fast. He was promoted to vice chairmanship on a fast track um, because of his personal relationship to Xi. Um, and by comparison, Zhang was more respected as a leader in the PLA, uh, not only because of his family, but also because his, you know, seniority and his track record. Um, so at present, the struggle between the two vice chairmen may still be going, and this certainly creates a big headache for Xi. Okay, now let's talk about um, Xi Jinping's newest headache or newest worry. And this one came from the PLA's chief of political work um, or the head of HR. And here is a picture of the 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 PLA's CMC, Central Military Commission. Uh, there were seven people, but one is gone. Li Shangfu, the defense minister, is no longer part of the CMC. And the man on the far right is Miao Hua. And he is the chief of, um, he's the head of the political department, political work department within the CMC. And he is also in charge of personnel. On February 15th, a freelance writer, uh, Du Zhen, who is actually based in the US, uh, a Chinese writer, he wrote in a Taiwanese media called Up Media. Uh, he wrote about Miao Hua, uh, who oversees the entire PLA's personnel work. Uh, he said that according to Mr. Du, so Miao is likely the backer of the new defense minister Dong Jun. Right, uh, who replaced Li Shangfu. How, however, he said that Miao Hua may be a silent tiger uh, in Xi Jinping's inner circle. Tiger means a major corrupt official or uh, an official uh, with very high ranking. You know, tig that's what tiger, you know, flies and tigers. <laughs> flies are the lower ranking officials who are corrupt. And tigers are the big ones, the big shots. So Xi Jinping was, at, you know, catching flies and uh, attacking tigers. That's Cang Ying Lao Hu, right? Yi Ba Zhua. So, so this author, Mr. Du, said that Miao Mei you know, Miao may even be the number one tiger in the military, meaning he is the most corrupt uh, PLA officer in the military. And his argument is that Miao has been in charge of CMC's political work uh, for more than six years. And this department oversees personnel and promotions and, historic to, and historically has been the most corrupt area in the military. Two of his predecessors, Xu Caihou and Zhang Yang, were involved in massive corruption scandals. One died from illness, and the other committed suicide. So both died. And the article stated that for decades, PLA officers have been paying their superiors to be promoted. Since Miao Hua is the guy in charge of promotion, right, overseeing all promotions, Basically, all promotions must be approved by him before being re reported to Xi Jinping. Um, he's saying that all officers must carry favor with Miao Hua. And also, after he was appointed as, as the uh, head of the political work department, he has built his own network within the PLA. He has planted many of his people throughout the PLA. And all political commissars in the entire military work for him and are his informants, including the new defense minister, Dong Jun, the new commander of the rocket force, um, uh, Xu, I think his name is Xu Xishen, 
and also the new commander of the Navy, Hu Zhongming. So Miao has always been considered a very close ally of Xi because of, again, because of their connection in Fujian. Um, about Mr. Du's article, there are other Chinese experts who don't believe, they agree that the political department historically has been the most corrupt um, uh, area within the PLA, uh, but they don't believe Miao has as much power as his predecessors because now Xi Jinping has centralized so much power in his hand. Um, so they they don't think Miao ha has has that much power to be corrupt or to build his own network of uh, or his to build his own circle of influence. But regardless, this article published in the Taiwanese media appears to have an, an impact or uh, appears to have an, have an effect on Xi Jinping. It looks like he's suspicious about you know, Miaohua, at least for the time being, because following the report, um, the guy, you know, the, the head of HR and the head of the political work department has not been seen a whole lot. He appeared on March 4th, the day before. Do I have a picture? I do have a picture. Uh, yeah, under the, I had a picture. There was a, there was a picture of him sitting at the, at this uh, meeting on March 4th before the the two set before the opening day of the two sessions he looked very dejected probably he already sensed um, the upcoming storm um, but since then he was absent from several major uh, meetings so on the opening day of the two sessions, he was seen on the day before the opening session. On the day of the opening, uh, in the news footage of the opening ceremony, other members of the CMC were seen, but he was not. Um, the PLA news media reported the activities of all CMC members during the two sessions, except him. So on March 6th, it reported the speeches given by the two vice chairmen. On March the 7th, the PLA News published reports about the activities of the other two CMC members, uh, Liu Zhengli and Zhang Shenming, who separately participated in the deliberation of the government work report. How however, Miao Hua, also a member of the CMC, was not mentioned in the news. People associate his absence uh, with the Taiwanese article, which means that Xi Jinping is easily influenced by these outside noises and is highly suspicious of, of, of his mil military leaders, right? Um, now, there's another um, uh, story or case that can, that can prove that somehow Xi Jinping is suspicious of 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 his of this Miaohua guy. And that brings us to the next topic, the next uh, story. That's the awkward, the awkwardly promoted new defense minister Dong Jun. Do I have a picture of him? Yes, there he is. So Dong was named the new defense minister on December 29th, 2023. That's only three more than three months ago. Um, this was after Li Shangfu had been missing for more than four months. People, many people thought that Dong would join the CMC and become a state counselor, um, like, like his predecessor, right? Um, at the two sessions. However, that didn't happen. He was not promoted to those two positions at the at the past, um, at the two sessions. The two sessions are the National People's Congress and then the Chinese People's Political Co Consultative Conference. So those, and they, they have um, concurrent sessions. So in short, people refer to them as the two sessions. It happened um, during the first week of March, right? Um, so that his promotion did not happen. 
So far, Dong Jun is the lowest ranking defense minister in CCP's 75 years of rule. Before him, there were a total of 13 defense ministers. The first four, um, uh, like Peng De Huai, Ling Biao, uh, Ye Jianying, and Xu Xiangqian, held highest administrative rank uh, the CCP has, which is which is the state level, the highest. Um, highest administ administrative rank is the state level, the state rank. Um, that means you are a major leader of this of the state. So only the highest ranking officials uh, are given the state rank, the state level rank. So the first four Chinese defense minister were regarded as the highest officials. Um, in the country. Then the next, so we have four and then we have nine, the next nine defense ministers, right? The fifth to the 13th. The fifth was actually Xi Jinping's former boss, uh, Geng Biao, right? That was his first boss. Uh, those nine defense ministers held the second highest rank. They held the rank of deputy state level meaning they're not the top leader, but they're almost there. That's the second highest. So that makes Dong, Dong Jun only hold the ministerial level. He's at the minister level. So he's the lowest ranking defense minister um, China, China, I mean, the CCP ever had, ever has, has had. Um, so when Li Shangfu was the defense min minister, he ranked fourth in the CMC, second only to Xi Jinping and the, and the two vice chairmen. Now, Dong Jun is still not a member of the CMC. Um, he ranks seventh uh, with the six CMC members ahead of him. Um, I think Dong Jun is not trusted by Xi Jinping, probably because he was recommended to Xi Jinping by Miao Hua. Uh, and, also, and so Dong's affiliation with Miao Hua is costing him further promotions. Uh, and also Xi Jinping may, you know, maybe need some time to make sure that he can trust the guy uh, because he has certainly learned a lesson from, from Qin Gang and Li Shangfu. So that's why he's not in a hurry to promote him. Uh, now, Dong Jun is the first naval commander to be promoted to defense minister, but he has no he has had no special accomplishment in the Navy. He's a staff officer by training uh, and had never served in the capacity of a commander or even a captain of a ship or a submarine. So his promotion, Xi Jinping's promotion of Dong has surprised many PLA officers. Um, so Xi Jinping also understands that if he were to further promote him to become a member of the CMC, he could alienate many more people. Okay, now let's talk about the PLA media's interesting struggles uh, with Xi Jinping. So on March 17th, this, the CCP military website um, and also the Ministry of, uh, of National Defense, do I have a picture of that? Here we go. Let me make this smaller. Oh, I'm covering some of the text. It's okay. Um, and also the PLA newspaper published an article titled, Transparency is the Most Powerful Supervision, which seems to be directed at Xi Jinping. I mean, this, this article, you know, emphasize the importance of transparency and and um, in 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 how to prevent corruption so it's it goes it's very short but it says something like this it says power the power without supervision will inevitably lead to corruption and also says to prevent power being abused power must operate under the sunlight and accept supervision from the public from the masses. And then, he, and then it goes to say, to leaders, being transparent and accepting public supervision is a must. So the article, you know, 
emphasize the importance of timely. It, it goes. Oh, it goes on to say. It goes on to emphasize the importance of timely and comprehensive disclosure of affairs that should be made public. Uh, warning against selective and delayed disclosure of such information. Um, as it may undermine the trust between superiors and their subordinates and create misconduct. That's what the article says. This is very, this is very daring. I mean, given, you know, um, I mean, given this is coming from the PLA, right? Uh, you know, last year, Li Shangfu was suddenly removed and we still don't know what has happened. In a year, a total of... Um, uh, 11 PLA officers have been removed from, um, uh, from uh, like the People's, People's Congress, right? So what has happened to these 11 military uh, leaders? Nobody knows. And from the end of last year to January this year, within a couple of months, uh, the leaders of four state-owned defense companies, including China Aerospace Science and Technology Corporation and China Ordnance Industry Group Corporation, uh, were all stripped of their position in the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference. And no explanation was provided as to what has happened to these four people. Furthermore, Liu, Liu Yazhou, the son-in-law of former Chinese president, who has been sentenced to life in prison, uh, and his case was not explained. So all of these, you know, there's just so, so much um, purging, internal cleansing uh, within the PLA without explanation to the masses, to the public. And I think it has certainly caused um, the PLA officers at lower ranks, um, you know, being upset, you know. So, and 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 then you, if you think about it, the only person who decides what information is going to be, you know, released is Xi Jinping himself. So the very person who's keeping all of the information in the dark is Xi Jinping himself. So this article is basically targeting Xi Jinping, right? At the end, the article said, we must protect the rights of the vast number of officers and soldiers to obtain information, their right to participate and overseeing, you know, I think anti-corruption. So, I mean, this, this article is reminding the, the PLA leadership about the rights of the officers and soldiers. I mean, this is actually complaining to Xi Jinping. So uh, I know it's nothing in the West, but in, in China, this is very daring, given that it's coming from the PLA media. This was actually posted on the defense website. If you I mean, this screenshot is, is taken from the defense uh, minister's a defense ministry's website. So um, that's very interesting. Um, so let me wrap up. So we talked about the conflict between Xi Jinping and his two vice chairmen, primarily because the two vice chairmen are, are, are fighting uh, with each other. And Xi Jinping is a little suspicious or has grown more suspicious of one of the one of his most trusted officers, the man in charge of PLA's human resources and political work, right? Because um, there was a very compelling article published in Taiwan about uh, it was not written by a Taiwanese writer. It's written by a Chinese writer who lives in the U.S. about Miao, uh, this guy Miao Hua, who is possibly the most corrupt official in the PLA and who has, you know, enormous amount of influence uh, within the PLA because he controls who gets promoted. And he has uh, quietly pushed three people, three promotions, um, the, the commander of the rocket force, the commander of the Navy, and then the defense minister. Um, and those are his people. And these claims have, have certainly made Xi Jinping very, uh, how to say, uh, it becomes his newest headache, shall we say. 
And then because of that, the, the newly promoted defense minister is in a very awkward position because everybody knows that he is, even though he is a defense minister, but he is the weakest one. You know, this, it's almost like he's not being fully acknowledged that he is uh, the defense minister. Uh, last but not least, you know, different voices can be heard in the, you know, in the PLA. Um, and the fact that, you know, so many PLA media outlets and the, the defense ministry are carrying these uh, noises uh, tell me that things, you know, things, there's a rift between Xi Jinping and his senior leadership in the PLA. All right, I wrap up my uh, my talk tonight. Uh, I don't know how many people find it interesting, but I think it's interesting. All right, let's see. Let me go through the super chat questions uh, real fast. I want to thank those who, um, after I mentioned, after I mentioned that I actually have a donation website, people have, um, I have seen uh, more donations coming in. I think it, it's, uh, it, I think people really didn't know that I actually have a donation website. So I, I thank you. I, I try to send an email, a thank you email to to everyone, but I'm I might have missed I might have missed a few. All right, so let's see. I think I've I've seen some super super stickers and uh I think I saw them. I don't want to miss them. Was there one? Huh? I missed them? Oh, there's one. Power shift. Thank you for your efforts and insight, Lei. They are always Im informative. Well, thank you, power shift. Jeff Ramos. Hi, Jeff. Any info or update on submarine PLA survivor or had the same end as the PLA pilot? In 2001 and 03, I have not heard anything. Although I, I must say that it's not because there isn't anything coming out. It's because I didn't pay attention to that. Um, yeah, I have not heard. W, thank you, Lei. Insightful as always. Well, thank you, W. All right, let's see. Um, all right. J. Lit Lit Litka, Miss Lay, does the CCP suspect Elon's Starlink systems of spying on them? Maybe North Korea? Um, I heard that Elon Musk signed an agreement with Beijing promising not to offer Starlink over China. And he also included Taiwan in that agreement, which uh, upset the Taiwan, I think a lot of the Taiwanese. Because I mean, by doing by including Taiwan in an agreement with Beijing, he is saying that Taiwan is part of China, right? And and so, I mean, if he signs an agreement with Beijing, you know, promising not to offer Starlink over China, that's okay. But why does he include Taiwan? So. So you asked me, does CCP suspect Elon Musk's Starlink system of spying? Well, they already signed an agreement. So, you know, if Elon Musk honors the agreement he signs with the CCP, then he wouldn't be offering the system in China. All right, let's see. Um... One, two. Thank you, Lei. John S., your analysis is better than any news site. Thanks. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Thank you. Uh, Kurt. Oh, hey, Lei. Hi, Kurt. Hi. Thank you. Okay. Um, let's see. All right. Let's see. Not a lot of questions. Nick Fury. Fury. Furry. <laughs> Nick Furry, um, any news about report of the Chinese Boeing 737, which dived 90 degrees last year near near Guangxi? Yes. I think a, a few weeks ago, there was a report. The Chinese aviation authorities officially released a report. And the report said, basically said, 
It's not equipment malfunction. It's not a human error. It's not a terrorist. Basically, it said it's none of anything that could cause the the air disaster. It ruled out all the possibilities <laughs> that could contribute to the disaster. So people said, "Well, the only." I mean, like it's not a mechanic failure. Uh, so the only thing that it can be is, you know, it's an intentional act by someone who's controlling the aircraft, right? Because that's the only thing it doesn't it didn't say, but it ruled out all the other possibilities. Um, so yeah. That's what what came out. I think a few weeks ago on the on the anniversary of the accident, near the the anniversary of the accident. Um, let's see. Um, let's see. Grandpa Jim, thanks again, Lei. It's good to hear that there's some resistance. To Xi Jinping's dictatorship, making enemies of generals and admirals can be dangerous. Yeah, infighting is just the nature of business uh, within the within the CCP. So that's just the nature of their business. Yeah. All right. And that's how they operate. They cannot. They cannot. They, if they stop fighting with each other, then that's not CCP. That's not PLA. Max Schroeder, what do Chinese people think of Spanish-speaking countries? Spain, Mexico, Peru, Chile, etc. Also, Spanish-speaking countries versus Brazil, Portuguese. Which area do you prefer? Do I prefer? You asking about Ch mainland Chinese? Their view. I don't. I don't really know. Um, my view. I have not visited South America, so I cannot say a whole lot. But I know from from geopolitical perspective, Beijing has placed great importance to South America because it's in in the backyard of the United States, right? Its biggest adversary. So. South America is very important to um, to China. If you uh, th there's so many Chinese businesses in Brazil. I talked to um, someone that I know in Brazil. Uh, I mean, they they have yeah, they they do so many so much trade with China. So you have the country has so many people. So even if a small percentage of Chinese go. Uh, to other different parts of the world, you see them everywhere. <laughs> so they they are everywhere. They're certainly in South America. Even uh, Cuba is it Cuba or Cuba? I don't know. How do you guys pronounce? Is it Cuba or Cuba? Uh, anyways, even a few years ago, when people went there, they said the Chinese were buying real estate in Cuba. Yeah, so. That just tells you they're everywhere. <laughs> Mitsu, what's the possibility that she does a final consolidation of power and the struggle that results just breaks uh, the breaks the CCP before Taiwan? I think as he consolidates power more and more, you know, if you think visually, if you imagine someone's trying to consolidate power more and more, because you're one person, right? You can only manage, you know, I mean, in, in management, people know, like when you run, when you manage a large company, you, one person, one manager can only manage, what, well, I don't know, half dozen direct reports, and they need to manage more people. So there are many layers. So when you, Xi Jinping is consol consolidating power, like Li Qiang is losing, is, is you know, he's not trusting Li Qiang. And, I mean, of the seven Politburo members, I mean, the, the six other Politburo members he has, he's 
he doesn't have many to that he can trust. So as you as you consolidate power more and more, you're actually alien alienating, you're actually alienating all the other officials. It's very dangerous. You're you're cutting you're you're you become detached. You, you know, you, you're this one person sitting on top of this gigantic CCP infrastructure or power system. And, you know, and it's just very dangerous because you could say you, you are this one man who holds all the power. Everything has to go through you. But how can you run a country like that? So basically you're detaching. He's as he consolidates power, he's removing himself away from his base more and more. And he's isolating himself more and more. And that's just very dangerous. So you're right. So it could, you know, something could happen. You know, the other people can get together and overthrow him as he consolidates power more and more. All right. Okay, that seems that seems to be all. Fritz okay. CPC is actually the name of the political party. Huh. Uh yes. Well, but it's it's everything. CPC is everything in China. Huh. All right, that's all for tonight. I think that I'm at the end of the questions. Well, it's Saturday night, and I ho hope you have a great week. Oh, here we have a question. Nixon 61X. Lei, you have, have you looked into why Mao was confident enough to invade North Korea fighting the U.S., lead the United Nations, but abandon invading Taiwan, different only by KMT? I made a video of why Mao uh, was confident, wanted to start Korean War. I made a, a, a three video, a series that talk about every war the CCP started and their incentive. Mao's uh, war with Mao, the Korean War, and then the, um, the, in, the Indian, the Sano-Indian War of 1962. Um, and then the the Vien the Sino Vietnamese War uh, in the seventies. So you can take a look at that. He had he had his motive. It was to obtain Soviet um, nuclear technology, and and there are other other agenda for him. You can watch that video, Chris. Maybe you can post the link in the description so people can find can find the video. Can you, Chris, can you post the three war series here in the description? Thank you. John Savila, Savila, Savila. Whenever Chinese PLA CCP deterrence is being discussed, it's always the USA being placed in front, wherein the truth is NATO and the, are behind the USA. Is that a question or a comment? Because the CCP, the CCP does does not see NATO as its uh, foremost enemy. I mean, the CCC, the CCP identi identifies the United States as its foremost enemy. All right. Okay, all right, that's all. Peter Melvio, Melvio, which branch of the PLA is really gung ho military action across the Taiwan Strait? I think the Eastern Theater um, is the the PLA unit that's charged with the is the main is the main unit. Uh, charged with the responsibility of the Taiwan Strait. And the reason He Weidong, the, the second vice chairman that I mentioned in my presentation, the reason he got promoted into um, the vice chairmanship on a fast track was because he was the mastermind behind the, the threat, the threatening military exercises um, that was put on during Nancy Pelosi's visit to Taiwan, I think, what, two years ago? Yeah, so he um, planned and directed the military exercises during, uh, I think it was in August, 
and um, and before the twenties uh, Party Congress, and that's apparently Xi Jinping thought that he did a good job. Um, so he that's why he got promoted. So <clears throat> yeah, so the Eastern Theater is the really gung ho military action across the Taiwan Strait. I don't know if I answered your question. Did I? All right, that's all. Then thank you very much. Oh, here's a question. Remington Frog. I've been wanting to ask you for months, CCP and Chinese nationals were visiting very important strategic agriculture here in Central California. Yes, they have been. Yes, um, the C Beijing is very concerned with the lack of agricultural resources and assets in China. Um, um, I made a couple of videos on that. They have been buying um, food processing facilities around the world. I made a video, I, I think it was at least two years ago, about all the major food um, food prop, food uh, brands and processing facilities that that's owned um, by the Chinese. That was two years old. I, I'm not sure if there are any recent new purchases. Um, if you if you Google that, you probably will be able to find it. I, th I think my list was pretty exhaustive. I looked everywhere and tried to find everything I could find. Um, I think it was pretty exhaustive and very inclusive. Uh, yeah, they want because China has um, uh, the arable land is is fastly reducing, right? And China does not have enough water resources so part of part of the problem is water this the severe lack of water resources in china has led to food um, or agricultural issues and the other is um seeds seedings right seeds um so yeah i, I explained that in that video <laughs> There's some Chinese who are uh, who are certainly enjoying my show. <laughs> well, welcome, Jiang Nan de Chen. You certainly enjoy it more than anyone. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. That's all for tonight. Well, thank you. <laughs>